What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we are doing another episode of Espresso Anatomy, and on this one I'm going to break down the three layers in a shot of espresso. If you're looking at a finished shot of espresso from the side, you'll generally see two specific layers, the crema and the liquid portion below it. But in reality, espresso is made up in three distinct layers, the heart, the body, and the crema. Each layer carries its own distinct attributes in terms of flavor and aroma, but as they combine their true power is realized, and it creates this beverage that is loved all over the world known as espresso. So my goal here is to break down and taste each layer independently. Of course this can differ a bit based on the coffee, so I'm going to focus more on describing them in broad terms that I think will apply more universally. Plus, separating the layers isn't going to be an exact science. It will actually be something more similar to the unfortunately named salami shot, which if you aren't familiar Chris Baca did a great video on that, and I'll put that in the description for you to check out. But anyway, let's talk layers. The heart is the first layer of an espresso shot, and it's those dark brown syrupy textured drops that's essentially the foundation of the shot itself. And as the shot's being pulled you can definitely see that those first drops and that first little bit of espresso is especially viscous and thick. It sticks to the walls of the cup like it does the inside of your mouth, and it appears to have a slight speckling of grounds that slip through the basket. The flavor itself actually matches the texture. It's heavy, it's dense, and it's slightly grainy. It's reminiscent of a melting square of dark chocolate in your mouth. Along with that, it also carries a good amount of acidity. The body is the second layer of the shot, and it's where a lot of its complexity lies. And this is for two specific reasons. One is because it's the biggest portion of the shot itself, but it's also made up of three distinct ingredients. Soluble solids, soluble gases, and insoluble solids. Soluble solids are what we taste and what shows up on extraction tests as TDS, or total dissolved solids. Simply put, it's the actual physical amount of coffee dissolved and pulled out of the espresso puck itself. Soluble gases are the gateway for the coffee's aroma, which, as we know, is also key to taste as well. Insoluble solids are a mixture of coffee oils and cell fragments that are either suspended or emulsified and create the sensation of mouthfeel. Like I mentioned earlier, since the body contains so many more components and more yield, it generally creates a more complex, more spread out flavor. The acidity is lower than what you would get from the heart, and is more balanced with sweetness and clarity. There is also more discernible flavors upon both sipping and in the aftertaste. By a huge margin, crema is the most easily recognizable and widely known portion or layer of an espresso shot, but it's also slightly controversial. It was originally called coffee scum in the early days of espresso, but is now considered generally as a sign of a proper extracted shot, but some still prefer to scrape it off before diving in. The depth and color of the crema has a lot to do with the coffee's processing, freshness, roast, and preparation. Crema itself is made up of a blend of CO2 and coffee oils both suspended in water. When scraped off the top of a shot and tasted separately, you'll definitely get hit with that bitterness. But it's an inherent flavor in coffee, and personally I believe it's a necessary part to an espresso's balance, but to each their own. Whether you stir, swirl, or sip it straight, your espresso's complex flavors and aromas are built up through layers of extraction. Coffee, water, oils, and gases percolated under pressure all add up to this wonderfully complicated beverage that is enjoyed all over the world in many different ways. Of course, understanding all the layers and the science and all the variables for espresso isn't really necessary to enjoying it, but my guess is if you've made it this far in the video, you're already fully down the espresso rabbit hole. And if that's the case and you haven't already seen them, definitely check out the rest of my Espresso Anatomy series. There's lots of videos in that playlist that have lots of information, and if you can't find what exactly you're looking for about espresso in that series, let me know what that is because I'm always looking for ideas to keep this series going and keep adding to the educational level of this channel. But with that said, I think that's all I've got today. Let me know your thoughts on this video, drop any comments, concerns, or questions that are hopefully coffee related down in the comments below, and as always, I'll see y'all next week. 
And a big thank you to my November Patreons, Ads, James B, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Obo, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean Noel, Spookus, Bount Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew Horrison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Jason C, Jerry, RD, Tim, Matt, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler F, UK Espresso, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, Oliver L, Thomas B, Daniel P, Mike B, James S, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, and Sebastian. And of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, a big thank you to you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Prometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.